open this morning for 98. Please stand for
Well, it's good to be together. Am I on back there, Kristen? Can you hear me? Uh, well, look, I, I'm learning how to work this microphone, and today's service has been a, a cooperative effort on a lot of people's part, but uh, uh, Elena Mary put the PowerPoint together. Didn't that, doesn't it look good? She, uh, she did a great job, and she was emailing that to me, and I was sending her back saying, can we change this, and, and uh, that went on, on and on, and uh, then Kristen's operating the computers back here in the back. Justin looks like he's uh, getting trained. Um, uh, <laughs> I think this first time you've done all this, isn't it, Kristen? Uh, she's doing a great job, and, and uh, so... It's a good thing. Uh, Sandy Schaefer got the communion together, and so we'll be having communion today in this service. And uh, so we're figuring out things as we go, and God is just helping us. Now, we do uh, want to take time to pray today, and we do have needs. And, of course, you see in our bulletin, we're continuing to pray for Jane. Uh, Jane's going to have treatments for a couple of months uh, before she does something else. So we're going to pray for her during this time as she goes through this process. Um, then you see there the family of Louise Loria. That's uh, Amy's uh, close friend's mother. And uh, so we, she passed away this week. And she's, what, what was I told, Amy? She's 90. And uh, so we want to pray for their family, but she's been going through a really, really rough time. And then uh, I told Lewis Johnson yesterday when I saw him at the hospital that everywhere I went, I was getting updates on his condition. Uh, and uh, so the word's been getting around. But Lewis is at Centennial Hospital up in Nashville. Uh, they did find blockage in his carotid artery and so wanted uh, want to get, go in and get that uh, cleared, uh, but in that process of being in the hospital now since last Monday, uh, he's developed a cold, and so he was coughing yesterday. Uh, uh, Angie said when she talked to him on the phone this morning, his voice was rough and hardly able to be heard, so uh, let's pray for Lewis. He was concerned when I talked to him yesterday that this cough might cause him to have the uh, artery clearing delayed. And I don't know what might happen. Uh, and they weren't on the schedule yet, so we want to pray that things will clear up and that they'll be able to get the things done that he needs to get done. And, uh, of course, we love Lewis. And, uh, you know, but he's had kind of a rough week in the hospital. He was told things were going to happen that didn't happen. And... And so I think he kind of got a little bit discouraged by that. But uh, let's pray for him uh, as we pray. Y'all got other needs that we want to particularly lift up this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. Okay. We want to pray for their family. Yes, Alan. Um. You know, I was with several people having surgeries this past uh, week in, uh, in, in Nashville, and uh, we just believe God's going to help folks to recover and do well. Let's lift our hearts to the Lord as we pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to come to you today and to gather in this place with these people. And we recognize, Lord, today that there are so many things going on in our hearts and in our lives today. We pray for those today that have been mentioned out loud here today. And we just ask that you would touch and help. 
Uh, but Lord, we recognize that there are lots of things that are going on that we want to pray for. We pray for our world today and uh, where we are in a place where every time we look at sources of news right now, we see stories of pain and suffering and things going on, violence and war, uh, things we never thought we'd be seeing right now, uh, crime that is beyond our thinking in our own nation and in cities around us today, Lord. And we pray today that you'd work in the hearts of men and women all around the world, that you'd bring peace into our world, that you'd guide nations and the leaders of nations today, just as we know your word tells us that you do. And so, Lord, I just ask that you would help us do what we need today. Uh, we pray for these uh, who, who have been mentioned today, Lord. Many of them need a healing touch from you today. And we recognize, Lord, that even as we uh, begin to see uh, a new normal develop after our times of uh, dealing with this uh, disease and infection that's spread amongst us, but, Lord, we see that there are others still sick and some, Lord, who are part of this congregation who have been infected de these days. And we just ask that you would be uh, at work amongst us, bring a spirit of health and vitality amongst us, and help us to recognize that you're doing things here. Now, Lord, we specifically and, and individually think of Lewis Johnson there in Nashville at the hospital today. Uh, I, I thank you, Lord, for how he's depending upon you. And, and Lord, knowing that he's in your hands today, but we pray that you would help him. Uh, not only this blockage that he's been trying to deal with, but also, Lord, I pray that you just uh, touch this uh, infection that he's dealing with that's caused this cough and scratchy throat and, and all things there. And we pray, Lord, that you'd heal, bring healing to that and help him get strong. We thank you for the fact that he's been able to get up and walk down the hall and, and be able to be able to get around. But, Lord, he needs a touch from you. I pray that you'd encourage him and do what needs to be done there. Now, Lord, there are some of us gathered here today and others that we're concerned about who are grieving loss today. Some of that is very, very fresh. And I just ask, Lord, that you'd give us the ability to know that you are doing what needs to be done if we'll just open our hearts and receive everything that you want to do for us. So help us, Lord. Give us the assurance that you're at work. And just now, as we come to a time of you, uh, of a moment of silence, Lord, we pray your Holy Spirit would minister to each of us and give us confidence and faith that you're doing what we need in our lives just now. Could we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, now, one of the things that I've had in the bulletin a couple of weeks now, but, but I don't think we've done, is that during offering time, I'm told that there's a tradition around here that some of the young people would get the, what do we call this, the uh, cups of joy, and after the offering plates passed, that they would go around and, Hold them up to you until you put something in. Is that the way it works? And uh, so uh, we're going to ask our ushers to come and help us with our offering this morning. And uh, then we uh, also will ask...
for help in passing around the cups. Y'all, y'all know what that? Y'all know how to do that, right? Uh, there. We'll wait a minute and let them get in place here for that, and <laughs> they're working on it. Okay. Well, let's go ahead with our offering plates, and then we'll see what we can go, go do next. Thing. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures near me low. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Y'all carry money around with you or something here. Uh, you know, they did a great job. I, I've sometimes thought, you know, if we got the children to be the ushers on a regular uh, 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 basis, we'd drink, get more money because they just stay there, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think about whether to tell this story or not, but maybe I'll tell you. Some of y'all may have been through this kind of thing, but some years ago we went on a work trip over to Kenya, and we were working in an orphanage there, and we were going to be uh, planning on attending the church service at the uh, Mission Hospital there at the English-speaking church, and uh, one of the local pastor overseers came to me because he knew I was pastor in the group and he said pastor Bob where are you going to church Sunday and I said I'm going with the group I don't have a way to get anywhere else he said would you like to go with me where I'm preaching this week and I said oh yes do you you know do you have room for my wife to go along and he said I'll check on that and so a couple hours before time that he was supposed to preach, he came rolling up with a Toyota Corolla with him and his wife and children, and then they put me and Margie in the back seat, and we took off down these little muddy roads. Uh, they said they were passable. 
Not if I was driving. Oh, by the way, the steering wheel was on the wrong side of the car, too. And anyway, but before we headed off, he looked at me and he said, Now, Pastor Bob, there will be an offering and you will be expected to give. And then everybody in the church went up front. And when I put in $20, he said, and Pastor Bob from America puts $20 in the offering plate. <laughs> and everybody clapped <laughs> with every gift. Some people brought chickens and, uh, you know, uh, they flopped around. So, you know, I, I think we're more comfortable with the way we do offerings, don't y'all think? Okay, Zuri, you're up here. Is Rusty coming up front? Uh, who else we got that might join us up here? Uh, anybody? All right. <laughs> Y'all are wearing dresses that match today. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm uh, preaching uh, today and in the next few weeks, but y'all be back in the back, I hope, about the Lord's Prayer. What what'd you say, uh, Zuri? Preaching to children. Preaching to the children? Well, I'm, yeah, that'd be good. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer. Do you know the Lord's Prayer? Have you got it memorized yet? Not yet. Okay. Well, it's a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. It's in two of our uh, places in the Bible, and it's a good idea to learn it. And so we say it every week, and as we say it, my hope is that you will learn it so that you can say it too. And most people that are part of this church have learned the Lord's Prayer when they were little, and you can learn it too. Do you remember what it says? Let's start and see how much of it you can say, okay? And I bet the people in the crowd here might help. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, you said quite a bit of that, Zuri. And Rusty didn't say any of it because she's got something in her mouth, but that's uh, normal. And uh, so you're learning it. And it's a good thing. And thank you. And uh, so, uh, let me pray with you all, and then we'll let you go back to the uh, classroom, okay? Thank you, Lord, for these young people and all the young people of our church and our community. Help us, Lord, to live our, all of our lives in such a way that those who are around us and, and uh, who watch us will be able to see that you are at work in our lives, and we are obedient to you. Amen. Amen. Okay, good deal. Here, you can take the whole thing. All right. You know, I've been uh, attending the softball games and uh, to watch them and the other children connected to our church. Uh, it's been fun while watching people out on the ball field. And, uh, you know, Chris keeps telling me that I'm going to get on the ball field, and I'm just shaking my head saying, uh, you know, Chris, I'm watching you hurt and uh, <laughs> uh, after playing ball. And it's been a long time. Uh, but we did start a couple of weeks ago before our singing Sunday uh, to look at the uh, passage of Scripture that, where the disciples came to Jesus and they said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And uh, so as I thought about that, uh, more and more I began to say, let's just stay here for a while. 
There is so much rich understanding within this prayer that we say regularly that I could be here for months, really, uh, trying to break down what it means. And I think sometimes we get to the place where we just say this so quickly and automatically that we can pass over what all it means. And particularly for those of us who've been in church most every Sunday of our lives, <laughs> you know, I was in the church nursery the first Sunday of my life. I, any of y'all uh, like that? Um, you know, nowadays the doctors tell them not to get the children out for a certain number of weeks or something like that. But back then, uh, we went on to church and brought our kids to church and those kind of things. And uh, so depending on how the techniques you use were, that was my experience. I don't have any memory of missing church. I do have this vague memory of telling my father one day that I might stay home. <laughs> but that didn't work out uh, the way that I thought it was. And I'm thankful for that kind of commitment. And so, you know, to see the lifelong commitment that my family had and my parents had to want to be there amongst God's people that they had gathered with for all those years uh, in the same place was really a blessing to me. Now, my life as a pastor uh, has not had that kind of be there in the same place for, uh, you know, 50 and 60 years like my parents did uh, every week because I've been moved from congregation to congregation and so it's a different kind of relationship. But, you know, I don't remember memorizing the Lord's Prayer. Any of y'all like that? It was just something I've always known. I think about the fact that uh, we didn't say the Apostles' Creed in the church services where I grew up, but we say it here. And what I've begun to realize is there's many of you all that have said that so often. You know what's in the Apostles' Creed. You, at least you know how to say it out loud without thinking. Well, let's stop and think. The Lord's Prayer starts with, and, uh, you know, we put a little bit of context here. Uh, if you go down here to uh, verse 2, Jesus said to them, When you pray... Say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. All right, now, I'm not even going to go that far today. I'm going to start with our Father in heaven, which, by the way, this is the prayer from Luke, and the original language there, and what you'll find in some of the other modern translations, does not have our in it. It just says, Father in heaven. So let's start with that phrase uh, they add here in this version, our, just because that's what we're used to. Because the prayer in the book of Matthew says, our Father. But let's just stop and talk about what does it mean when we pray to God the Father? Well, I could spend a lot of time talking about that this morning because there's a whole lot of meanings of that. If you add our Father, you're specifically talking about His relationship to us, but you also have to recognize the fact that in calling God Father, Jesus was to a certain degree telling us something about the nature of God because Jesus has been recognized already by his disciples as Lord and Savior. He is God as well. So there is telling us a certain thing about the doctrine of the Trinity and of who Jesus is. He is God the Son, and God is Father, Son, 
And it doesn't mention it here, but you can also add on there Holy Spirit. That's not really what I want to talk about this morning, but I did want to mention it. What does it say to us? Well, one of the things it says to us is that God is God is beyond us. I kind of got a hold of this, and y'all probably heard it by now, but uh, there was a story some time back about somebody who made friends with a Jewish man. And he said, came to him, and he said, you know, I don't know much about the Jewish religion. Can you tell me what Jews believe? And he said, well, he said, first of all, we believe there is a God and secondly, we believe that I am not him. Now, I, we can smile about that a little bit, but really the truth of the matter is that's pretty profound. Is the fact is that there are many people who uh, outside the Christian faith who their whole conception of God is that there's this spark of divinity everywhere. God's in the tree, and God's in the air, and God's in me. Well, there is a certain sense in which God as creator made everything, but it's an important Christian doctrine that came along very, very early that the creation and the creator are separate. There is a God that is more than just what I have within me. And so there are several implications of that. One of them is He can tell us what to do. He made us. And we should be ready to answer to Him. Now think about that for a minute because we're living in a world right now where when we start saying that God has certain standards, that's not considered okay in our society. This actually happened in a place not so very far away a few years ago. Um, I was asked to pray at a public function. Uh, I got a call this week from somebody asking me to come and pray at the mayor and alderman's meeting over in Manchester. And I told her, I, I, she called me on Monday asking me if I could do it on Tuesday. I said, no, I got to go to the uh, softball game uh, t Tuesday night. <laughs> So she said, well, can you do it in September? And I said, yes, I'll do that. But I thought after we hung up that I should have said, but I don't pray these namby-pamby prayers. I pray to Jesus because there was this function. There were literally thousands of people there, and I got up and prayed like I always do. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to be in these places where these people have gathered to do something good in this uh, place. And, you know, as soon as I said amen, the band struck up and began to play, and there was uh, lots of activity and all that kind of stuff, and I walked off the platform. And as soon as I walked off the platform, this lady walked up to me. I've never seen her since. I don't know who she is. Uh, she looked up at me and she said, could, could I speak to you for a minute? And I said, well, sure. Uh, she said, you know, not everybody here is a Christian. I said, well, I'm aware of that. Well, she said, well, next time you pray at a function like this, you might ought to pray a prayer that wouldn't be offensive to somebody who's not a Christian. I was stunned. And I just kind of stood there for a minute with my mouth hanging open.
And I finally said, thank you for telling me that, as if I didn't know. I have since thought that what I should have said was, I'm a Christian minister. If you ask me to pray, I'm going to pray to Jesus. And if you're offended by that, you're offended by me. Don't ask me to pray. If you'll be offended by the fact that I want to lift up Jesus. You see, I believe that there's a God that I speak to personally and that he talks to me about what I do. And he speaks to me in his word. And occasionally, I begin to read what's in the Bible and get ready to stand here in front of y'all to speak. And I think to myself, if I read what this says, not everybody in this church is going to like it. Y'all think I ought to be selective about what I read? Because it's not put here so that I like everything that's here. It's put here so that I can live my life according to what it says. And I hope that you feel that way too. But we've got people in the church right now who are pretending as if any kind of command that tells us to change is just out of bounds. Oh Lord, help us to live our lives according to the way that God tells us to live rather than to think somehow we ought to change what God said to fit, right? The fact that we pray our Father is an admission that there's somebody who has the right to tell us what to do. It's not just a, well, let's get together and hear somebody say something nice. Because the standards of what is nice change. They just do. Have y'all watched that happening in the last few years? It's uh, pretty, well, there's been a whole lot of change in our understanding of what's right and wrong in our society uh, in the last few years. Now, it further goes on to say, our Father in heaven, I think the language of, what did I do? <laughs> it must be me to, I, I was watching Kristen didn't touch anything uh, <laughs> I could just turn it off I guess and uh, move somewhere different in heaven God's in heaven that means that he's not just a projection of us. He's beyond us. Now, yes, he's also near to us. He gets involved in our lives. So occasionally, you know, I hear some kind of secular expression of godness. I don't know, there was a song a few years ago that over and over again they kept saying God is watching us and everybody thought that was so wonderful but then it was from a distance. Well, it's more than just from a distance. You know, of course, I know that none of y'all sitting in this room would have seen this back in the 70s but 
Um, there was this movie they called Oh God. Y'all, y'all hadn't seen that. Uh, John Denver played a store clerk and George Burns was God. Pretty strange. Uh, but if you listen to the message of this, oh, it's just so sweet and wonderful. Uh, George Burns appeared to John Denver. John Denver was the only one who could see him or hear him. And he said, I just want you to go tell everybody that everything's fine. I love them. They're good. Well, that's not what God did. God came all the way from heaven into our world and suffered so that our lives would be different through our trusting and faith in what He did. So yes, God's out there in heaven to demonstrate that He's beyond and has intentions for us beyond what we feel, but He's also here amongst us so that He might help us. Now, this morning, we're going to have communion service. And uh, Glenn, you told me to tell you when it's time. Let's see if we can't bring the communion elements up here to the communion table. <laughs> uh, and the responses for our prayer of thanksgiving uh, are going to be up here on the screen, but... I, when I stood in the back looking up here, I wasn't sure that I could see all that. So you can also find those responses in the hymnal on pages 15 and 16 if you follow along with that. And uh, Now just bring them up here and put them on the communion table for now. And, and then I'll call you all back up here in a few minutes. Uh, it won't be long. Okay. We're at that stage because this is the first time we've had communion since I've been your pastor where we're trying to figure out each other. Y'all realize that? And, you know, one of the things that I would like to say is that there's not just one way to do communion. Y'all realize that? I'm not trying to change how you've been used to it, but that doesn't mean that there won't be any such thing as change in the future, but we'll learn. But we didn't get things put up here at the proper time this morning. And so, like I say, we're trying to find our way along, and I appreciate Dustin and Glenn helping us with that. Uh, but Christ our Lord invites to this, His table, all those who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, I would encourage you now to bow before the Lord and confess your sin in silence before God today. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Before his death on the cross, our Lord took bread. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take, eat, as often as you eat, do this in remembrance of me. This is my body, broken for you. On that same night, he took the cup, blessed it, offered it to his disciples and said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink this, 
drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy offering in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. By your Holy Spirit, Lord, make this bread and wine to be for us body and blood of Christ. Make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until we share in his heavenly banquet through Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glenn and Justin, will y'all come and help in the serving of this? And uh, my understanding is they're going to be up here with the bread and the juice. And uh, then we're going to invite you to come if you'd like to spend some time up here uh, kneeling their pads here. Uh, who's going to take this? And uh, we, we would invite you to, to pray. Uh, take whatever time you need. But, uh, but we'd invite you when you're ready to come and receive the elements of what the Lord has done for us.
is Lauren. That was about as smooth as I've ever seen it done. Uh, you know, for uh, y'all have done this before, and uh, so we thank you for those who filled in on my mistakes today, and uh, appreciate the fact that the Lord is able to meet with us. I started reading a book yesterday uh, about the meaning of the Holy Communion service, written by an Anglican bishop. That I've read other things that he's written. He tries to put it in very simple terms to try to explain to us that somehow what we're doing when we do this is that we experience the presence of the Lord and His grace in our lives. There's no real good explanation for that, but He comes and meets with us when we put our faith in what He has done for us. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, we do thank You for the chance again that we've had to be here today and as we go from this place i pray lord that as we have received these symbols of your body and blood that we go with a recognition that you go with us and lord help us that we might keep that as a part of us in every place we go in every word that we say in everything that we do in the days to come so that we might live our lives the way you've called us to live them. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time.